all the criminal beings on this world, the normal criminals, so to speak, they hate only one thing, and that's pedophiles. It's only one thing. They can do whatever they want, but on the moment you're talking about child abuse, they ex explode. They really straight want to kill. That's the world I was in, criminals. I have to go back also about the pedophile thing, the, because she told me that there are, were investigations investigations about pedophiles and all the humans who are doing horrible things with children that they assume they are completely dead to do this and that they need this extreme pulses to have something going on. Based on my own experience, I really start to believe it's actually a knowing because it, it was also about my own story, that you're still alive. Even you do the horrible things on this planet, you're still alive. I recognize this, and I, I tell you more about my horrors I created, but the horrors they created on children, they are still alive. Their light is still in them. Their human, the, the love, is still in them. But it's like mine, locked, completely locked in a bunker, atomic bunker. And they are afraid of the adults. They stop, their life was stopping like my life in the beginning. But they are pure. And I'm not defending them because I think everybody is responsible for their acts on, on, on this planet. But they need, a, they need a gate, they need a bridge to come over. And I want to invite all the people on this planet to come over this bridge of forgiveness. Because there is a whole army of people who want to take care of them, to heal. And of course, there are consequences of coming forward, but it's doable. The point is, they're locked up in their cells, they don't trust adults, and they're still human. In a way, they are human, and they need also affection. And the most safest way to get a bit of affection is through animals or children. I'm not talking now about the satanic part, about the normal part. So. One way or the other, in every human, I believe there is a child who is partly locked or completely locked because we are all, we're running through a program. So in a way, who can proclaim on this earth, on this moment, that he is fully the being he was when he is born? Who can claim this? Who can proclaim this on this moment? Who is fully the light represented on earth? Who is the original being without of being programmed, without of being hurt, without of being manipulated? The horror we are facing today is our horror. Because the world we are facing today is not because of the perpetrators, the perpetrators, how what? Perpetrators. perpetrators. <laughs> it's about the billions of people who are doing nothing. And it's not pleading guilty. No, 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 no. It's about being unaware. Having said that, I developed myself in a criminal way, covered by shiny import, export, and so on. So I got, on a young age, I'm talking about roughly around 20, I had already these shiny things like cars you can 
only afford when you are rich. Start playing with, well, I, I played the Hollywood show, like the succeeded businessman when I was 20. And then most of them say, oh, he has rich parents, of course, because otherwise, who, how can you afford this? But out of all this business, I start also being involved in um, currency trading of um, who was not um, with tax black money. So I start to be making a little bit of business with money. And then one of the guys in Brussel, who was one of my partners in dealing with currencies, said, hey, you are run around the clock daily with all your business and activities. Why don't you go in the money trading? We have license available and we can make a deal. And we did this through offshores, like no, nothing on your name. And uh, it could be a nice career for you. <coughs> there was one condition, a warning ahead. You have to put your conscience in the freezer in minus 100 degrees. And I say, no problem. <laughs> hey, I'm nearly dead, so <laughs> no problem. So I became step by step a servant of the big money, step by step. It was still taking some years to come in the higher regions. And I get more and more excitement, like <laughs> from Russia. Secret Service, they printed better dollars, American dollars, than the American dollars who were circulating from the Federal Reserve. Better quality. And they were printed, made, made, in, made in the USSR. And we get the assignment, we get our commissions, and we get the assignment to dump this in the market through bigger drug, drug dealers. Uh, people who are dealing with weapons, all kind of criminal activity. Because that was a smoothie way to get um, all these uh, huge amounts of dollars in the market through the illegal channels floating around. And it was afterwards, it was just a part of the game to uh, have an economic war from Russia, USSR in that time, with America. And in the opposite way, they did the same. But I didn't know that in that time. So I, as a younger, yo youngster, like 24, 25, I was already messing around with economic wars worldwide. So after all these um, assignments, they start to spot you. Like, hey, here's a bright guy. He's always knowing his way, like hustling here, hustling there, playing with the rules. And then they start to invite you more and more for higher assignments. Then you start to work for banks, independent. You're doing the dirty work for central banks, for multinationals, for governments, for what they call now terrorist uh, organizations and all secret services. Hey, secret services, yes. And then on top, like the peach or the fruit of the cake, churches. Wow, you get the whole palette where the money floats, the big money. And you get the invitation to join in these circles to move all the things money they want to move worldwide to start wars to start all the misery in this planet because there is nearly no misery on this planet in a natural way it's most of them is created because they keep the system running because it's a dualistic system they make the money only because when it's dualistic and if we have all the sheep this energy containers they use only to suck. If they are asleep, fine, you can do whatever you want. This is also the mentality 
of the elite. Well, they are not elite. <laughs> they are not elite. The people I worked for in the end of the days, you're talking roughly about eight, eight and a half thousand people on this world who run the show. And they are like, they are like who I was, completely afraid, nearly dead, filling up the holes daily, never enough, surfing the monster of greed, the monster of more. And there comes Lucifer in, in the end. Because we are talking here about interdimensional things. This eight, eight and a half thousand became my friends because it was really coming home. First time in my life I start to be with humans who understand me and I understood them because we, most of them were going through the same hell. They did it in a different way, different bloodlines, but they have also a lot of misery in their lives. Electric caves are a normal thing in the education of this kind of societies. This is not about humans. This is about a very evil dark force who joy, who really enjoy to destroy all life on this planet and it's still on. And I was joy enjoying them as well. I really, and I don't say it with regret because I'm going back now in time, otherwise it's a fake, I really enjoyed it to have the opportunity to destroy all humans and all life on earth. Nature was nothing. It was to be destroyed. We were hating everything what represent life, what represent the creator of heaven and earth. Don't ask them, um, don't take this very light. You can't imagine, I understand that, not all can understand this, but this is going on till today. In the end, because I can give you all the details about everything I did in this world, like indirectly I was killing people. Like you are in a stealth bomber, dropping bombs. I did this financial wise as missions, like destroying temporary the economy of Italian. And then later on, when you are in the financial market, you listen to the people who are involved and they have a big laugh because some people were killing themselves because their companies were destroyed and they left behind women with children. And we have only a laugh about it. We joined it. That's the world I come out. My turning point was that I was so good in everything I did with my team that I was, in their opinion, ready for the last stage to be invited and um, sacrifice of children. That hits me. That was really going through my bunker. I couldn't handle it. It was hitting me like hell. I didn't go there. And I start to malfunction. And my whole career falls apart. Then, because I go briefly to this one, because you also can see my interviews, they notice this. Then they start to take me out of the system for a while, start torching me. And they want, because everything was in offshore, they want everything back because I own them, because I made everything through them. And they kept reminding me on the contract I signed. I didn't sign with blood. If I was signing with blood, that was the next stage, I was dead already. 
but this was a sort of gentleman agreement, and I still keep it, and I always keep it, about not mentioning names of persons, companies, and so on. And I'm a man of word. If I give my word, I will give my word forever. And if it's in the dark side or in the light side, it doesn't matter for me. So I came out, finally, and you can see it in the interviews. And then, on the end, my, my body was breaking down, heart attack, hospital, da 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 da. And then the new, then I, I have also uh, out of body experience again to see what they were doing with me. And then back in the body, the first thing I saw was my mother crying, like he is alive again. Then I run through several private hospitals for a year to recover of all the damage. Even have to set my back straight again. Then I was for another eight years completely off the screen, hiding in several countries on fake identities. And after the period of nine years, because I, even we have the agreements, even I gave them all what they want, I was still um, afraid um, because they promised me to kill the whole bloodline. So my, my wife and my children in that time were also escaping, also hiding, but separate from me. Um, so, so in nine, ye nine years being undercover completely, um, out that of that experience, I, I, I noticed how it is to um, miss your children. It's, um, it's horrible to have a child uh, death, but not knowing where your child is, is a bit more torture. So after 11 years, finally, I met my oldest son in that time and I was recovering and I started to be build up a relation with life. I started to study in theologic way, studying the Quran, the Torah, the so-called Bible, because that's more or less document. There are some satanic pieces involved. And I start to meet the creator of heaven and earth and that saves my life because he was the first one who really, really loves me. And that gives me the enlightenment to continue life because my first act of love was the real desire to kill myself. That was my first act of love, the first signal I was in a transition from death to a life. I want to kill myself in favor of the humans and life. So that was my first act of life, of, of love. So this involves more and more to be a social um, entrepreneur till the day as now it is. And the last point I want to give you is if we want to have liberation, don't look at outside anymore. Don't look at outside anymore. The change will be from inside. We, the people on this planet, have to choose different. Saying we don't want this anymore. It's enough. We can decide for ourselves to stand up to be as one again, unity and diversity, and we can cooperate worldwide with each other. And tools for this are there, because one of the main tools you need to transform is the financial monetary banking system I was coming out. The tools are available, like healthcare, energy, everything is already available on this planet. The only thing we have to do is connect with each other, unite with each other worldwide and say no more. Stand up, be the change yourself. And we will be liberating ourselves and our planet. And I can promise you, really promise you, because I have still a lot of contacts worldwide, the most still in the prison system 
the dark forces around them, they are screaming because their child inside of this atomic bunker wants to go out in a safe world. And we can create this safe world for these heavily damaged children. So thank you. We are the power behind the ITNJ. Add your voice. Sign the treaty.